Time now for an in-depth look at the market news on this Friday, and for that I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me today. So all three main indexes on Wall Street rising to yet new record highs. Korean stocks also started off higher. Tell us about the global markets and, and what happened here in Seoul. Sure. Uh, if you look at U.S. market, uh, on Thursday, the bank's earnings were released. The Morgan Stanley shares rallied after the company reported uh, earnings were much stronger than expected. And uh, on the macro side, retail sales for December matched the forecast. And um, most of the economic numbers seems to indicate that uh, U.S. economy is resilient. Uh, and because of that, if you look at the U.S. equity market, it continued to do a melt-up trend. Uh, Dow was up 0.9%, and S&P was up 0.8%. NASDAQ was up over 1%, and small caps were up 1.26%. Uh, because of this news, um, the Asian market in general started with a very strong uh, rally, but uh, it kind of fizzled down. Uh, Kospi ended with only up slightly by 0.1%. Uh, cost that was up by about 0.3%. Uh, however, though, the Samsung Electronics and Semiconductor Industry seems to be uh, continued to be the leader of the indices. Uh, main reason for that is because people are expecting that uh, semiconductor price to recover in the future. Also, uh, secondary battery industries, the electric cars, uh, seems to be in focus, uh, and that resulted into some of the major names such as LG Chemical and Samsung SDI to show rising trend. Uh, global market seems to be taking a little bit of a breather uh, going into tonight's uh, trading uh, for U.S. Uh, because people have absorb that news of U.S.-China trade deal, the first phase. Uh, probably they are looking into the next phase and what other things will come out in the future. Well, now, as we heard just a minute ago, the U.N. Conference on Trade and Development is projecting the global economy to grow this year by 2.5 percent. A lot of that, it says, will depend on Asia and emerging economies. Korea projected to do slightly better than last year at 2.3 percent. Tell us about that report, and how do you, do you think this is how it will actually play out? Sure. I think that the global growth rate above 2.5% is most likely achievable. Um, if you look at the U.S., uh, you're looking at at least 2% plus of the growth rate. Uh, with the consumer spending rising due to the income growth, uh, we think that U.S. Uh, consumption will rise at least 3% this year, and that should have positive implication for the global economic growth rate. Uh, as you said, the Asian market is the most important thing because China lies there. Uh, Chinese growth rate that released today uh, for the fourth quarter, it grew 6% year year. Uh, we do expect that growth rate to stabilize. Uh, it has come down quite, uh, quite sizably, but nevertheless, it is looking into 6%. Uh, Chinese probable growth for this year should be somewhere between 5 and 58 to 6% or so. Uh, main reason for that is that if you look at the consumption and you look at the fixed asset investment, uh, they are doing a very good restructuring and they continue to focus on growth of the consumer sector, uh, consumption industries. So uh, structure of the Chinese economy is going in the right direction. Uh, that should benefit a lot of the uh, other countries as they can export into uh, China. Uh, and also, if you look at the fourth industry, revolution industries, uh, we think that the investment on those uh, sectors will be quite aggressive this year. Uh, that should allow for the growth rate for global economy to be well above 2.5%. Well, here the uh, Bank of Korea held its first policy meeting of the year, as expected, kept the key interest rate at one and a quarter percent. It's also projecting the Korean economy to grow somewhere in the two percent neighborhood. Uh, what do you make of this, and what effect, if any, will uh, the interest rate decision have on investors? Right. I think that they're just kind of waiting to see what happens to the other economies globally. Uh, they have lowered interest rate already a few times. Um, I think they have some room for another rate cut, but they are looking into what's happened to global economies. As a lot of the uh, indications are saying that the economy is bottoming out for globally and maybe picking up later in the second quarter of this year. Uh, if that happens, then uh, the Bank of Korea cutting interest rate is not necessary. Uh, but I think that they need to do a lot more aggressive fiscal, fiscal policies to boost the economy. main reason for that is because uh, the area of the fourth industrial revolution industries 
investment seems to be quite timid for Korea. Uh, they're lagging behind uh, China and U.S. Uh, therefore, they need to focus a little bit more on that. Uh, existing competitiveness in areas such as semiconductor and shipbuilding and electronic sector and auto sectors looks okay. Uh, but nevertheless, without that force in this revolution, industry is backing up uh, the growth rate rising from current 2% territory to 2.5% will be very difficult. Uh, they are expecting 2.3% growth rate for GDP this year. Uh, the BOK is. Uh, I'm not sure whether they can achieve with the current policies. Uh, we think that they need to do a lot more uh, by the uh, fiscal policy as uh, the budget needs to be expended a little bit more. All right, Mr. Yu, that's where I'll have to leave it uh, for today. Have a great weekend. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much.